Finally, the full review of the Synology RT6600AX. This was spoken about at Synology's event late last year, and I've been given the chance to do a full review. So a big thank you to Synology for sending me this. First, let me say, if you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like and share of course as always, and comment down below. Also, if you wanna support the channel a little bit further, there are other ways to do this with my Amazon affiliate link and other links in the description. And now also we have super thanks. So anything you can give or do helps the channel greatly. Now that's out the way, let's take a look at the physical router itself. And then we'll go over to the computer and have a look at the software side of things. So here is a look at the router itself. It has some status lights on the front, Wi-Fi, WAN and the four gigabit ports. Uh, you have the venting fans on the side. If I quickly show you how the antennas come out, so these are six high gain antennas that come out like this and you can point them in any direction like so. And then if we flip this to the side, you can see we have the Wi-Fi and WPS button just here. Again, more vents on the side. There's just more venting on this side. On the back, we have all the detailed information just here. We have loads of vents on this router by the looks of it and that's to keep that 1.8 gigahertz quad core processor nice and cool. We also have some more on the front here followed by the RT6600AX model number. Looking on the back we have a USB port to plug in something in terms of storage or, or a 4G dongle in case you wanted to have that as a backup connection. We have a WAN port just here and we have the two and a half gigabyte WAN port as well. So you can choose this to use this as WAN or LAN, it's entirely up to you. You have another three gigabit ethernet ports, you have a power button, which is on and off, a reset button, and your DC in just here. There isn't really too much to say on the exterior side of things, but I've mentioned in my sneak peek video that this router is packed full of features, and it comes with SRM 1.3. So some of the features we're gonna take a look at is the networking and VLAN capabilities, traffic control, safe access. I really do like this feature from Synology. It's very powerful parental control and web filtering. What VPN options you have and what mesh options there are. And finally, we'll have a look at the DS router app as this is the new 2.0. Currently, SRM is only available on this router itself. So the 6600AX that I have here in front of me, but the good news is it is coming to other models later this year. The price point of the router is around about 300 pounds. And for the amount of features that comes with the router itself, I think this is a reasonable price and hopefully it should be available soon. But let's jump straight into SRM 1.3 and take a look around. I've now gone ahead and plugged the router in and got it set up and connected on my computer. So what we start by doing is just clicking start and what it's going to ask you straight away is to set up an administrator account. You won't be able to use admin uh, as that account is already created and disabled on the router itself. So I'm just going to call this inside wire. Then we type in a password. You have to agree to the EULA and then you click next. First thing you're going to do straight away after that is create yourself a Wi-Fi network. So I'm going to call this IW test one. Type in a password and then you have to type in a location. So United Kingdom, and then we we'll click next. Then you would select what mode you wanna put this in. Uh, you have two options, you have a wireless router, which is what we're gonna set this up as, or if you wanna use this as a wireless AP, you can do as well. So you could actually, in theory, use two 6600AXs, have one as a router and have one as a wireless AP. Then we're gonna say, do we want access to the SRM software externally? So I'm gonna click that as enabled for now. Click next. Internet connection, I've just plugged this into my existing network, so I can just click auto IP, and click apply, and that's gonna go off and set up. So I'll just let that go off, and we'll come back once it's set up. So that's all set up now, and it says congratulations. We go ahead and click start managing now. That then takes you to the first look of the SRM software, and this is running 1.3. You can click here to modify your SRM update settings, so let's go ahead and do that first. So the first one is the newest SRM and all updates, so it's gonna install anything and everything. The second one is install important updates only, and then check for SRM updates automatically. So if you want it, we just want it to download updates only. Uh, it's not something you probably want it to go off and install, especially if you're using this in a business environment. You definitely don't want it doing that. So we click okay. 
And I'm just going to move myself to the other side so you can see the screen a little bit better. With all of Synology's gear, you see a similar sort of interface. So click on here, you've got the file station, SRM help, package center. There's nothing actually in package center as of yet other than safe access. So no beta packages uh, or anything like that. We have log center, control panel, network center, Wi-Fi connect, network tools, security advisor, support center, safe access. So the ones I'm really more interested in um, we can have a quick look around the others, uh, but the ones that I'm really interested are in is Network Center, Wi-Fi Connect, Network Tools, and Safe Access. And just to show you, this is running the latest SRM software, so SRM 1.39193. Next thing I'm going to have a look at is Safe Access, so if we go ahead and click on that. And as I mentioned at the start, I really like this tool from Synology. It's very powerful in terms of what it can do for both the home and the business. If you're wanting to block something or specific categories or websites, this is the thing for you to do. And also you can set timers and scheduling as well. I'll give you a very brief demo on this. If there's any features that you've seen in this video that today that you wanna see in a bit more detail, let me know down in the comments below. So we just go ahead and click the plus, we click start. Uh, we're just gonna use user profile for the time being. We click next, uh, we go IW walls, Click next. I'm going to choose my MacBook Pro as that's the only thing on the network at the moment. And there we go, that's been created. So I'm going to go ahead and set the access rule. I'm going to turn on the web filter. You can choose any of these already that have already been pre-created, but I'm going to customize it. So what you would do here is just click add. Um, we're going to call this social media. And then we click next. We tick social media. Uh, we don't need to put any domains in, but if you did want to block a specific domain, you can add that in here. Click apply. And that's now added that category to the profile. We have safe search, so you can turn on Google, Bing, and YouTube safe searches. Timed quota, so you can limit the time access, so for two hours a day, for example, and then the time quota runs out. And then you have the internet schedule. This allows you to access the internet for a specific set time, and then it runs out. Just to show you here, you can set different times each day as well. I'm gonna leave that off for the time being. Click OK. Very quickly, show details and continue to the site. And then you can see that's actually been blocked. So I can actually go here and submit a request and say, I actually want to view this website. So I'm going to send you a request because I want to go to it. And we click close. So what you'll actually see in a few seconds is there'll be a pop-up that comes up in the top here, which shows you the notification that's come through. But also on top of that, you can just go to access requests and you can see that just come through. So you can click tiktok.com and you can either accept or reject it. Just off the side of that, you can see that there's some activity here, so you can actually see the logs coming through. And finally, you have settings where you can set your notifications. And also, if you have a version that you've used in a previous Synology router, you can export it and restore it just here. So you do not need to go through that configuration all over again. Uh, the next thing was I wanted to have a look at was Network Center. Now you can see already here, I've created one inside wire test network and that's already broadcasting. There's nothing connected to it at the moment. Uh, we have the internet connection. So this is where you can use the sec secondary interface for two and a half gig if you want. You can enable it just here. You've got DNS savings and energy efficient ethernet. You then have smart WAN. So this is where you can actually set up your failover and load balancing, interface priority, policy route and interface check. So all these options are just here. Quick Connect and Dynamic DNS can be set up just here, and you have the mobile network. So if you want, you can plug in a 4G, 5G, whatever dongle you want to plug in to the USB slot on the back of the router, and that can be used as a failover if needed. You have port forwarding options, local networks, which we'll come back to in just a second. We have traffic control. So what you can do with traffic control is you have the option to ban a device, so you're banning this device, you can no longer access the internet or SRM. You can use custom speeds, so if you enable traffic control, you have the option to give a guaranteed upload and download, and also a maximum upload and download. So that can be done just here if you want to set that. And also you have the option to give high priority, so you can click that, and it would allow high priority for that device. If we go to advanced, you can go ahead and add a device here, so if you know the device name, It'll give you a drop down. I only have one device on the network at the moment, but you can do that. And also you can create an app rule as well. So for example, Amazon, you can go ahead and click next and you can give a specific amount of bandwidth to that application. 
So again, very powerful with what you can do and all your settings are very configurable. You have monitoring, so you can actually see what the live traffic is, what's happening at the moment. There's no browsing really going on, but there you go. It's very little. Uh, and you've got reports as well. So if you want to generate some reports and some historical reports that you've already got, you can do that also as well. You have security, so some general system settings and DOS settings. I think we've seen this sort of similar before. If you want to create some new firewall rules, all the options are just here. So you can choose a protocol, you can choose uh, the source, the destination, and allow or deny. And again, you have the option to put that in whatever order you need to, because obviously you'd want to set some priority higher than the other. Alongside with the other rules, just keep in mind that to create your IoT network, you would use the firewall rules to block and allow traffic between networks. If you want to see a video on this as well specifically, drop me a comment down in the description below and I'll see if I can put a video together on how to set up your IoT network on a Synology router and auto block. So if you want to enable auto block, you can do as well. Last but not least, we go back to the operations mode. So we have the wireless router and the wireless AP. Finally, the local network. So this is the one that probably a lot of you have been waiting for. Uh, we have the different types of networks that we can create. We want to look at VLAN tagging and we want to see how many wireless networks we can create. So let's go ahead and start with creating our first network. So straight off the bat, we can. and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give that 172.16.1.1 and let's give it a VLAN ID of... So you can allow the management of the device through this. So if you don't want to allow that, you can leave that unticked. And there's also network isolation. You can now choose to assign it to a different port. So you can choose a pro, uh, port one. Port two is always assigned to primary network. So there's no way to change that one. That is there as it is. And if you actually click on the eye or just hover over the eye, you can see it says to ensure access to SRM, port two always belongs to primary network. So you need to be able to get access to the SRM locally. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign that to network one. Click next, we're going to set up an SSID for it and we'll type that in, IW test network one and then the password. And as you can see on there, that's now created that network. So we've got that set up on port one. So I can then create another network. So let's go network two. So we'll call this IW test network two. I'm just going to cre keep creating these until it tells me I've hit my maximum. So I'm going to click next. Right, so I have five networks that I have created and we go ahead and click create and it says the maximum number of local networks has been reached. So you can have five networks, including the primary and guest. So they are all created. You can see on here that the ethernet ports that are assigned, you can see just here. So if you're assigned to the primary network, you can see all the VLANs and you can access all the VLANs as long as your ports are tagged. On network three, you can see the IW test network one. I tagged that to ethernet port one. So I enabled it on there. So that is the only network you can see on there. You can't see any of the other ones. You can't see the primary one. It is literally just that one. I'm going to quickly show you the VLAN tagging. Now, this bit's a little bit interesting in terms of how it works. So you have all the different VLAN options that you can see. Uh, you can give a dedicated port. So we have the internet, which is VLAN ID zero, which is the WAN. Um, port one, as we gave the test network two. So that is actually whatever you plug into there is going to go automatically to test network one and then all the other ports that you leave as unassigned or leave on the primary network. Any network that's untagged, if you plug into it, it will give you the primary network and you have to tag the packet for you to be able to access that specific VLAN if you plug into that port. So it basically configures it like a trunk port. The only thing that is slightly disappointing, which may come in a later software release or I've missed it, I might not have seen it just yet, and when you go to configure the port, it doesn't allow you to tick multiple networks. So for example, if I just wanted IW test network one and IW test network three sort of to go through as tagged VLANs, and I don't want two to be associated with it at all. That's the only bit I've seen so far in terms of this. Like I said, there might be something I've missed, but this is what I've seen so far. So if I quickly close this and go to Wi-Fi connect, you can see we have all the SSIDs here, which are listed down here, primary network one, two, three. Now you're gonna say, well, it should have given us five networks, but I haven't actually enabled the guest one there. So we would have to actually delete this guest one for us to be able to create the fifth one. So if I go into guest one, just to show you it, I can actually say, uh, enable the SSID. So that's gonna enable it. It's got a password. You can actually do password rotation. So it emails you a password every morning, every week, every few hours, however you wanna set that up. There's a schedule again, so you can enable scheduling within the guest network. We have a guest portal, so we can enable the guest portal if you wish to do so. 
and client isolation so none of the clients can talk to each other. So when we click on configure trunk port, you can see that you have the assigned networks, the auto trunking and the results. So the one that we actually assigned to a specific network is just an access point. And if I was to untick one of these, it would just change to an access port as well. Um, if you keep it ticked, it will change it to a trunk port. To have a look at was the app that is available for the Synology router. So you can actually set this up from start to finish using the Synology router app. There's no problem with that. You're able to do it, you scan the QR code, you get connected, and away you go. Um, however, I've just connected to the wireless network that I created earlier, and I'm going to quickly show you what the app looks like. Just straight off the bat, you can see in, that we're connected to the router, it's showing one wireless device, which is the phone, and one wired device, which is the computer. Um, we have the Wi-Fi settings just here, so you can see all the different Wi-Fi networks that we have set up. Share your Wi-Fi network, so depending on what network you want to do, you can click it and you give them a QR code to join. Excellent. So this is quite handy if you have a guest that comes around you can just give them the QR code they can scan it and join your network. Then you can see at high level just your safe access request so the one that I sent earlier you can see the TikTok uh, it's blocked on the IW rules and you can go ahead and accept or reject it from here. Then we go to devices and it shows you what's wired, what's wireless, what's online and offline as well. We have safe access, so these are the rules that we have set up, so you can add more rules from here, and you can pause it as well. So if you want to pause the rules completely, you can pause it, and I can go ahead and use that, it's no problem. I can go ahead and use that to access social media networks. We then finally have settings. So we have the login information at the top, so I joined via IP. We have the Wi-Fi and the share Wi-Fi that I showed you earlier, WPS. Wi-Fi point, so this is if you want to add in an extra access point, so I'm hoping to do a video on this at some point. Mac filtering, you have your internet connection, traffic monitoring, VPN, port forwarding, your Synology account, quick connect, firewall, auto block. So pretty much without going through all of this, there's only a few more, but without going through all of this, you can pretty much control your whole router from this app. So a lot more powerful, and it does work with Synology 1.2 also as well. So for those of you that do have that, Maybe not all the features will be available, but for those that are using 1.2, you can use this app as well. Next is VPN Plus. Now, this is actually quite a powerful tool that Synology offer, and it's all included within there. So there's a few different VPN options when it comes to using the RT6600. There's Synology VPN, which allows you to set up a few different types of VPNs. So you have the SSL, a remote desktop VPN, a web VPN, a web portal, and domain settings. So if you want to set up the Synology Dynamic DNS or you want to use some other domain settings. You have standard VPN that you can set up. Now this allows you to set up SSTP, OpenVPN, L2TP and PPTP. Some of these are more secure than others so you can choose whichever one you wish to enable. You then have the site-to-site -site VPN. Now it says there's no valid site-to-site -site license which currently is the case. However, I believe in later versions of the SRM software that this is no longer going to be required and the license will be included automatically. Then we can take a look at the permissions. So inside here you can choose what you want your accounts to access. We then move on to the connection which shows you the history, who's online and a web VPN monitor. We have a log which shows you who logs in and out, the report and the license. At the moment you're allowed one concurrent user to use the Synology SSL VPN, web VPN and SSTP at once. So we click activate and then it's going to say do you want to authorize it which I do so I'm going to authorize my Synology account, read the agreement and click agree. So there we go my license key has now come up which actually I have 39 licenses and there we go we can activate it and it's validated. As I mentioned the site to site VPN so how to activate that the license you just click activate just here and we click authorize again and that will go off and authorize the account you agree to the terms and conditions click agree and there we go we now have a site to site license so if I actually go back and click here you can see now there is a manual uh, site to site that you can set up so within here you've got profile name pre-shared key what the outbound IP is what the remote IP is and dead peer detection and also we look at the encryption and this will give you all the settings within here if you want to see actually how all this works drop me a comment down in the description below and I can put a tutorial together. This is just a quick look at the overview of the software. On the screen at the moment you're going to see four different speed tests. I haven't run any iPerf tests just yet 
But if you wanna see more throughput testing, that might be just a video in itself and you know what you need to do, let me know down in the comments below. Going from left to right, we have the same room as the router. Then we have a room on the first floor, the furthest away. Then we go to the ground floor, which is underneath the router itself. And then we have the furthest point on the ground floor. Overall, the speed test does drop the further you go, as you would expect. But overall, I'm happy with this coverage in a four bedroom house. As I said, this router is packed full of features. Safe access, VPN plus, the DS router app, and now more importantly, the ability to configure VLANs and create multiple networks. It is on the limited side, but for the price point, I think the features are really good value for money. I know I mentioned about the limited functionality of the port configuration, and generally you can allow all the VLANs through because you're likely gonna be plugging this into a switch, but it's just a nice option to have within the software. Again, not a deal breaker for me, but it may be a deal breaker for some. Remember, if you want to support the channel, there are ways to do this. You can see down in the description below, and now you can see the super thanks button too. I really hope you found this useful. It was a bit long, but it's packed full of information. This is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.